I feel like I've gone deaf. My music is so much quieter than me. Not too sure what's going on there. Let's just do an audio check on the stream. Uh, should be good. It is very quiet, isn't it? Okay, three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the stream. It is the BNDO stream. It is my stream uh, here on the when the, the internet. It is uh, Monday, the 27th of June, 2022. It is the last stream of June. And uh, we're past the solstice. I keep mentioning the solstice, but it's been cold. It's been very cold. And uh, to warm up, how about let's get the GPU going uh, immediately. So, whoop. There we go. Super Mario Galaxy 2. Uh, today will be the last stream of Super Mario Galaxy 2. Because, uh, you can see, I've gotten way more stars than whatever I had done um, ages ago. We're now at 206 stars. There are... 240 stars. That leaves just 34 stars left. 34 green stars, and I think they're all in. I think I got like a couple in World Five, and then they're all World Six and whatever. Uh, but I'm gonna finish the game. I'm gonna give some finishing thoughts. I'm gonna give you some some insight into some other things I'm feeling. Uh, we all know that dialogue. We've seen it all before. Um, it's kind of interesting that I've like playing this game again it's all the green stars really does add so much more content to the game um well content in a loose way you know what i mean it just gives you something to do something to really like you know get the get the juices going i love the times by the way just the fact that like not only do you get a time on the race in these levels but you also get the actual level clear time which you can always race with compare with your friends uh but we'll start off we'll get two more green stars in this galaxy then we got bowser and then just all the world six and seven or s as they refer to it in game uh where are the green stars exactly i don't know this is also going to be a fun wonderful test for the for where where the green star is i'm hearing it already oh really hold on Oh, no, I can't jump off. I see it right there. I see it right there. Do they want me to just, like, completely just duck right away? I think they do. I'm pointing the Wiimote straight down, and we're hoping it's not angled. <laughs> that is so cheeky. That's a cheeky one. That's wonderful. Oh, boy. But, uh, yeah, no, I hope you all at home are having a wonderful week. Um... And, uh, and if you're not having a wonderful week, let's make this a wonderful week. You know, change some stuff. Spring cleaning in, in autumn. Uh, well, it's spring coming up in Australia. Not soon. Usually, you say start of spring is September or March in America. Can you do autumn cleaning? You can do July cleaning. Cleaning in July. Uh, but... Yeah, I, You know, middle of the year is always a, a bit of an interesting time, just because it's like... Oh, snap, wait, yeah, the financial year's about to end. Oh boy, we got, like, end of year, financial year reviews. No clue where the green star is. No clue. I'm gonna have to really listen out for it, because, uh... What's the odds it's on the, um... The, uh, flip side? Might be. Who knows. Uh, but yeah, no, we gotta do all these end of year stuff now. Oh boy, that's gonna be fun. But... Yeah. You know, keep that aside. Uh... This is, uh, it's been an interesting financial year, we'll just say, you know, re recovery, uh, some return to normalcy, although normalcy is always a relative term. You know, what is normalcy? It's only as normal as what you compare it to. Uh, but I will say that, uh, this week has been a mild return to no normalcy for me, because I have played not one, not two, but three video games in the past week. Um, greetings, Mr. Blub. How's it going? Um, I, I, I didn't start all three video games this week, although I started uh, two of them. So, what's that? Uh, okay, where's the green star? Because I've just gone normally. I haven't 
hasn't screamed out to me, the green star. So it probably is on the, uh, the backside, isn't it? Woke up two hours ago, tired. Ah, oh, jeez, man. I, I sometimes, like, I sometimes get very, like, sleepy if I wake up two weeks ago. That was an intentional kill, by the way, because I just want to start from the top. Okay, where's the other green star? We'll give the backside another check. Uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully you can feel uh, some productivity come through uh, via the stream or uh, via any other means you do. What's your, your usual, like, wake-up strat? Because I'm, I'm usually one to, like, just, like, I'll wake up. There is nothing there. Oh. Uh, like, I wake up so much earlier than, you know, when I have to, um, used to be leaving for work, but now it's not leaving for work. Um, but, uh, like, I'd be horrendous at really staying up. I, I always, like, I drag myself to stay up, um, for the stream sometimes. You'll sometimes catch some streams of mine where like, I'm just you know, absolutely knocked out. I don't know where the green star is. Where's the, where's the green star? What galaxy is this one? Just, just to know. Oh. We're in fleek like galaxy? Oh boy. Like, I hear that one. Uh, wake up, have to do work or other stuff. So, alarm, usually wake up uh, before that, anyways, and then stay in bed until the alarm goes off. Yeah, I, I, I sometimes, like, like, I'm 50 50. I'll have, like, a few nights in a row where I'm just, like, I'm waking up way too soon, and then I'll have a few nights in a row, like, uh, right now, where I hit the snooze. I only give myself, uh, the first one is immediately at the beginning. Like, you dive directly down when you start. Um,. I feel like I'm going insane, because after the, the spiral bit, like, I'm fairly certain I'm seeing every part of the level. Like, yeah, there's stuff going on, like, up there, maybe stuff going on, like, to the left and right. But, like, I, like, I'm gonna go very slow. Oh, it is there! It is there! Wow, that's cheeky. That is cheeky. Uh, you can go all the way around, but you have to go all the way around anyways to get the, um... Uh, the Comet Metal rings. Um, so, making breakfast. Ooh, what's for brekkie? I gotta do some eggs and bacon from time to time. I was, I was lacking some, uh, some butter for a while, and I've just, like, I've grabbed some butter. Some of that Devondale, not sponsored. Toast. Toast is always good. Nothing is more, you know, more, <laughs> I was gonna say primitive, but you know what I mean? Like, intrinsic to like, modern humans than heating bread. It's, it's, you know, it's, it's so classic. And it's great. Toast is so yummy. You can eat toast on its own. It's like, how does this thing suddenly have all this flavor? It's cool. I love it. How does heating up anything, like, give it, like, wonderful flavor? Like, yeah, it gives us energy, but it's like, it's tasty as well while you're at it. It's, uh, it's wonderful. Uh, so anyway, Bowser level, uh, well, Bowser Jr. level, rather. That is the... Can you knock this off the, um, off the galaxy, off the planet? You might be able to. Uh, let's see. I don't hear the green star, so it's probably continuing on. Let's get the, the stuff and continue on, but, uh, yeah. I will say, on the subject of technology, I think I've mentioned that my computer monitor, um, oh, oh boy. Ah, darn. I've mentioned my computer monitor is getting a bit of a, like, it's, I don't know, panel bleed of some kind. It's not great. Uh, let's uh, top off the kinds of other issues. Um, I'd sent off my Switch Joy-Con, the left one, because I was getting some uh, elusive Joy-Con drift, and I'm off, I'm off into space. That is, oh boy, I'm, <laughs> I'm rambling about Joy-Con drift. Uh, but I gotten the elusive Joy-Con drift for a second time on the same controller that was, uh... I'm not gonna say supposedly repaired, because it was repaired for two years, but it's just like... Oh, here it is back again. Um... And it's, it's not great to have Joy-Con drift. I'm jumping so far over. I'm jump. that's... oh... I'm from Tali. Oh, 
just, just me not paying attention. Um, yeah, let's not burn all my lives on Bowser 1, or Bowser Jr. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, I sent it off, and uh, Nintendo, or apparently the tracking label, so they got to Nintendo on Thursday, and uh, usually the. Oh, yeah, I remember this is just the most hideous green star. It's just like. It's just like you gotta pray that you just press the right spot. I don't think you can jump up here, can you? Because you hit the sign and you're not, like, high enough to, to get that green star, so yeah. Uh, but yeah, no. The, the Joy Cons in Nintendo's custody, again. It took two months for them to do it last time, but because that was two years ago, um, in June, mind you, or in May, so it's just over two years. It's not really, like, expired any any long warranty. Um, unless the controllers only have a two-year warranty, in which case that's kind of insane, but... They were pretty good at honoring the Joy-Con drift earlier, so I was like, sure. Um, but, uh, you know, that was... Not necessarily the middle of COVID, but that was at the beginning of people, um, you know, backing off, doing things for a while, so I don't think it was great for the logistics. I'm expecting to get it sooner, but, yeah. I'm trying to think, like, I think the only, like, Nintendo system I've sent for repairs, I sent the actual Wii back, because I had, um, a fan break on, on it at one point. But other than that, I've been pretty safe when it comes to video game peripherals. Wii remotes have been working mostly fine. I uh, can't recall any other ones I've had break. Um, but in the realm of computer tech, uh, I've got um, people who know me closely. I've got a lot of hard drives and a lot of spare like storage space to work around. Did I just get a one-up for hitting it right in the center? That's neat. Um, but uh, in particular, uh, I have bought a couple of hard drives at various points in time, and one of the hard drives that I bought two years ago, um, like, as of, I think it was May, so it's, it's definitely not out of warranty, it's a three-year warranty, and certainly within the, the usage period, um, it's, uh, <laughs> I, I noticed a couple of weeks back, oh, it's got, um, 77, uh, warning pending sectors. If you get- oh boy, did I- did I click slightly off, or...? Ooh. Okay. That's the Comet Medal. I'm just curious if the- I don't think the Green Star is... here. On this planet. Close? Yeah, that was pretty close. Um... I think I remember doing this bit without the cloud last time. Oh, but this is Bowser. Wait, so, yeah, this is Bowser. The green star is obviously not here, is it? No, it's not. So if I just bail... <laughs> am I back to Bowser? Because I'm like, yeah, it's obviously not during the boss. But now I'm trying to think. Did I miss it? Let's see if I can peer back. Eh, it doesn't really scream out to me that the green star was back there, but... So, maybe I just gotta look a little harder. Maybe, oh, unless it's a really stupid angle here. Nah. It's not like you gotta shoot yourself out into space. Well, more space. I can run a one-up. But I don't... The, the green star location doesn't quite scream out to me right now. So the only thing I can think of is that there's a really, like, cheeky spot with the clouds. Like, it's directly above right here, but there's no shadow. And obviously, I can look up and I can't see it. And I've obviously not heard it, and you probably would have seen it at that angle. Big boom bunker. Do we look it up or do we just 
try and go for it. Cause this is this is one of the first ones that I'm like, mm, I don't know where it is. I definitely I don't see it here. This this is the part that kind of goes like, oh okay. Um, now if there's one place I didn't quite look intensely, and that is uh, after the target. So I want to back out. Cause I don't I don't think if it's not if, if <laughs> it's certainly not a Bowser or Bowser Jr. Look, oh, it is around there? Twitch delay. Twitch delay. Brilliant. Looking up is boring. It didn't look like it was above me. I, I feel like I would have seen the star on that way, but I didn't look really intensely at um, this planet. Uh, the worst part is that, like, that was star, that was star one. Um, the one that's at the target, so it's pretty much anywhere that's not the target. Uh, let's get a perfect hit again. That's not perfect, but sure. Um, let's take out these guys just so that they're not on my way. And then I've got a theory that it's probably just chilling around here. It sounds like I'm hearing it, but I know it's just this one that I'm hearing. Like, unless they're directly next to each other, but nah, can't see it. It is here. I'm definitely hearing it on my right, and that's. Because it's the one I just picked up. I can look it up again. <laughs> it's cheating if you look at run to the first one and then diagonally. It gets quieter and louder again. Nah. mostly louder, just in the corner. Like, right right where this one is. Which I can't look up, but it's it's certainly over there. Uh, going once, going twice. Uh... Oh, nice. The, I was, I was going to say, like, well, let's just look it up on the wiki. Yeah, we'll get, the wiki describes the first star. Didn't describe the second one. And then... Yeah, problem is I'm over here. And I really don't want to, like, waste time by, like, looking this up. Good thing IGN's got my back, apparently. Similar to the f first, uh... Uh... Second cannon. Okay. Oh. What? Okay. Alright, um... Well, I, one, this is the second cannon, and two, it's... There! What the heck, bro? That's gnarly. That's gnarly as. At the very least, like, you know, I, I at least was under the right impression it wasn't at the boss. Um, <laughs> I'm amazed I got both of those first go, though. Well, that took... Slightly longer than I expected, but that's okay. Okay, 30 <coughs> stars to go. And especially, that's the end of World 5. We've got the gold on the galaxy, on the world. There we go. So, one more world full of wonderful... Well, two more worlds. <laughs> the last world's going to be, like, really speedy. Speedy easy anyways. Uh, but yeah. Uh, only missed the first star on this stream. Oh, the first one was, was easy as well. <laughs> you probably saw it in passing again. You probably saw it again. Given how many times I retried that that one. All right, green star one in the melty multi, Mel melty monster, melty melty monster. All right, they can't be cheeky and hide the green star just back there because that's the pipe.
of everyone's favorite uh, melty monsters, the Blogs. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it. I'm hearing it even more. Woo! It's up all the way over there. Okay. Just gotta release it at just the right point. Get yourself that height. It's not too bad. Yeah. So, why don't I run through the three games I played this week? Um, because they're not going to be too long. The first one I played was Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. I, uh, got this game originally because I bought SimCity 2013 when it came out. And EA were like, we gotta give people a free game because this game is kind of not there. So I, my choice of game was Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012. Um, and I, I had played it, I guess, mid-2013, later 2013. So DLC was out. Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 is a Need for Speed variant of Burnout Paradise, but with one of the most egregious DLC practices I have ever seen. It doesn't seem, there's one of the green stars there, uh, it doesn't seem too bad on paper, because it's like, oh, you know, you, you can, you know, there's some DLCs with extra cars, extra events, uh, one of them unlocks a new area of the map, you know, like, it's just like Burnout Paradise, is it not? Uh, but there's a fundamental problem. So the game, how it works, is you've got, uh, you know, your open world, and you can uh, find cars around, and you can effectively, as I call in-game, jack the cars. Um, whoop, there we go. Uh, you can jack the cars, so you can drive any car that you, well, not any car, but at least the set ones that are stopped, that you can drive. Um, the jacked, oh, oh boy. Didn't I do that last time? I immediately jumped into the first, like, the first fire bar. Whoop. This level's great fun, though. I love just having the, you know, the ba 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 What was that? Six notes? It's a, it's a light motif, you know? That's a technical term that just means it's a melody that plays in various scenarios. Um, but yeah, you can, you can take any car you want. Uh, the, this game, unlike Burnout Paradise, also has a police, uh, wanted level system. Uh, just means that, like, you know, if you're driving recklessly around uh, a police car, you're gonna get, um, uh, spotted and you'll be on the chase and then you run away. The reason why you want to do this is because you get, um, points for successfully doing a good evasion. The more, you know, the longer it goes for, the more points you get and therefore, um, you know, you rank up faster. Sure, okay. Uh, you don't really have to do it. Um, but it's definitely one where it's like, oh, okay, if you can run away from the police, then sure. Uh, one thing that now makes it kind of annoying is that all the DLC cars, they added in as, like, they tried to seamlessly integrate into the game. As in, all the base cars, you know, you come across them and you can jack the car and drive it. This also includes the DLC cars, but if you don't own the DLC, the jack the car button now becomes a open the origin store and buy the DLC button. You only know that you don't own the car because at the bottom of the screen it says go to store instead of jack the car. In the middle of a police chase, you will not, like, you're not paying attention to that. You won't see it. You're going to keep opening up the store and you're going to keep trying to buy the cars. Constantly. With real money. It's real DLC. It is one of the most annoying things I have ever seen in my, like, entire life. I've never seen, like, DLC that makes the base game so unbearably hard to play. Because I just keep accidentally wandering on a, onto a car and it's like, oh, okay. I would love for the game to just note immediately. I don't know what's with the flicker. Are you seeing that, by the way? Maybe my GPU is conking out. My whole computer is dying. Um, uh, but I've never seen a DLC that's so, like, you know, like it gets in the way. It gets so much into the way that you can't, you know, do anything about it. Um, so it, it legit dragged down the experience. The other thing that I thought was kind of weird was, um, 
I beat the game in six hours. It, it, like, the only thing left to do after you effectively beat the game is to play multiplayer. I'm also trying to spot where the green star is off the top of my head. I'm basically just beating the- Oh no, I remember this one. You gotta do the bounce and then you gotta yeet. You gotta yeet. Oh, you gotta ye <laughs> yeet to the right. Oh, it's, it's... Oh, that's a tricky one. That's a tricky one. Um, but yeah, no, the game is so incredibly short. Like, Burnout Paradise, I hate the way that it, it you know, every time you rank up in the game, like, you go from each of the five, like, tiers, and it unlocks more events, but it also resets your progress and all the events you've done. Like, yeah, that's, that's really obnoxious. This game, though, it's like... Yeah, it's not resetting my progress, but it's also, like, the amount of, like, work that they actually want me to do in order to beat the game is so little. And, yeah, also, Need for Speed Most Wanted. I had to mention 2012 in there because Need for Speed Most Wanted is a 2005 video game. That's seven years. It's been longer since Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 than Need for Speed Most Wanted 2012 was to 2005. They came out on two subsequent console generations, and it's not even a remake. It's not even like a, like a reimagining or a remaster or something. It's just a new game, a very new game, with the same name. They were very close when they did Hot Pursuit twice, but at least it was Need for Speed Hot Pursuit um, I think it was Need for Speed 3 Hot Pursuit. No, was it 3 or was it 2? I think it was 3. One of the early ones. But at least, like, you know, it was not the exact same name. This is the exact same name. It's so irritating. Um... And, uh... Yeah, no. Yeah. Very, very annoying. Very annoying of a game. Um... And they're very short. And it doesn't control amazing. It just kind of, it plays, you play it, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, the soundtrack doesn't scream out to me as well. Um, it's got a Muse song, that's about it. Uh, Most Wanted 2005 is definitely the superior title. I'd recommend if you uh, can find means to play it, play that instead. The map is so much better. What's kind of weird as well, it, it, this is something that, um, that I experienced firsthand. Um, the map of Most Wanted 2005 was entirely copy-pasted for the free-to-play Need for Speed World title. Um, which came out, I think, in 2010. Which is just, like, that's a very bizarre, like, thing that then, okay, so they've copy-pasted the map for not Need for Speed Most Wanted, and then immediately were making Need for Speed Most Wanted with not the same map. I don't know. Also, the map's so annoying, because it's a lot of highways, there's not a lot of, like, side routes. It does lead to good circuits. The, the actual events, the circuits are fine. I don't mind them. But the open world is not fun. The open world is, is very, like, you know, A to B. And, uh, kind of oddly as well, the way it's structured is that every car has its own set of events, like six or so events. Um, but because a lot of the events are the same between cars, um, you get, well, like, you know, you will be doing the exact same race between several cars, and you're able to just fast travel two races you've already done. Which kind of begs the question, the open world doesn't serve as much purpose. I think there might have... I played Need for Speed Most Wanted 2005 ages ago, but I at least felt like, okay, every single event was something new. Um, I especially really liked it in um, uh, Underground 2. That game's my, um, my personal favorite of the... The ones after the original trilogy, trilogy, the, the original set of games. Like once it hit um, Hot Pursuit 2, I kind of felt like it was a very like you know big shift in how Need for Speed was. It felt like you know modern arcadey rather than um, a little bit more of a prestige kind of brand. I don't know why they kind of ditched that. They had Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed, which is a really good like you know piece of history, effectively. It, it, it celebrates, you know, this lineup of cars, or this whole manufacturer, in such a, you know, really good way. Um, it was, uh, I guess it was at the top, wasn't it? I don't want to, don't want to get that one. Oh, no, oh, no, oh, I'm gone, I'm gone. Uh, yeah, Most Wanted 2005 is certainly a good game. 2012, 
It's a forgettable one. It also is not anywhere near as good as Burnout Paradise, the virtually the same game but earlier. Um, okay, I'm hearing one to my right. I'm hearing a star to my right. Whoa, whoa. Is it up? Or is it down? No, it's, it's up. I might have to blow open the walls to to do this one. I'm I'm thinking like, am I am I hearing it? I think it'll be easy. Oh yeah, no, makes sense. Yeah, it's on the walls. So we'll get halfway and then just jump up. Got it. Easy enough. Easy enough. Oh, but yeah, the Need for Speed franchise is uh, obviously a really like. Um, interesting one because it jumps between developer hands so much and they also keep jumping theme a lot. I think I... was it... was it on stream? I was talking about, um, uh, just like Forza jumping, uh, you know, like they have Horizon, they have Motorsport, two di very different kind of disciplines, and I was thinking like, you know, there's a lot of franchises out there that are afraid to try stuff that's different because people expect sequels to play exactly the same. Need for Speed seems to be a, a, another franchise that does that. There's, there's two racing game franchises, so I don't know. It's not, a, it's not the most brilliant, like, sample size. But, um, I guess you could say it's like Mario games. It's like Mario Odyssey is different to 3D Land, which is different to- or 3D World, which is different to Galaxy. Um... I guess a bit of that going on, where it's just like, feel free to try stuff different. Zelda's a pretty good one, where every game does seem to jump to different tones a lot. This is still the first, um, main star, isn't it? Uh, one franchise that first succeeded and failed with switching genres is Warhammer Dawn of War. Ah! I'd, I'd imagine since it's Warhammer, they would have gone with a, um, some kind of turn-based strategy vibe, but I then guess... Did they go real-time? This is Dawn of War, right? So... it's not... I'm thinking it's one of the strategy ones, like... Definitely leaning into strategy, but uh, I don't know. I've never, I've never played a any of the Dawn of War or RTS. Okay, the RTS. But then they like completely like change ship between Dawn of War one and two. Uh, with the old ones from the mid two thousands and three a few years ago. Ah, the modern day one. It's like um. Uh, Fallout 3, you know, where it's like the modern day retelling of uh, an older franchise, or um, maybe a bit loose, loosely uh, Goldeneye. You remember the 2010 one? Just like any like reboot. Bizarrely, I think a reboot that uh, has been well received is XCOM Enemy Unknown, which is incredibly faithful without necessarily being as complicated, but, like, it's a game that people definitely still respect. One was large-scale, based on the RTS, two was squad-based stuff, and both were really well. They were distinctly different from what I heard, never played them, but three tried to bring in with the mobile crowd. Oh, no, that that's a bad sign already. Listen, if there's one thing you don't want, it's for people who enjoy League of Legends to be playing your game. <laughs> Because people who enjoy League of Legends, like, you know, their pain tolerance is so high. You know, they, they are absolute mad lads. Uh, also, can you just... Yeah, you can... Yeah, you can kind of go... Not design like a mobile, but the master design like mobile maps. I want to say the original, like, MOBA map, like, the original Summoner's Rift, is that, is that the name or is that the league name? Whatever, on, um, on, a uh, uh, like, the original Defense of the Ancients. Um, I'm not too sure if that was a custom map. But definitely, like, you know, MOBAs and stuff still try to fit within, not still try to fit, but, like, there's a, there's an RTS core somewhere in MOBAs. Okay, so green star, did I see a green star? Maybe. 
I got the big rocks. Uh, but, yeah. I say, I say that the franchise has changed. I think the only real, like, crazy changing Need for Speed game was, um, uh, the Shift series and I'll say Porsche Unleashed while we're at it. And the original has, like, its own, like, vibe in places. Oh, uh, maps with rigid routes to each other's base. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, yeah, if you're doing base building, you should, like, have some open design. You know, it's, it's like, I, I guess, like, playing... I played Age of Empires, and I can be like, you know, Age of Empires is nice because you're in, a, you're in a part of the map, but you're not necessarily in, like, a, you know, your way into the map is not the same as anyone else's way into the... In, into your base. Like, you know, it can change between playthroughs. Or between, um... Uh, just... Environments. Uh... Yeah, I don't know too much about Dawn of War stuff. People are disappointed and watch it. Yeah. There were a lot of, like, you know, fairly different sequels back in the day as well. I'm still the kind of guy who hates, like, Metro... Not hates Metro Prime 3, but... Do -do -do -do. Black Forest. Ooh. I don't hate Metro Prime 3, but it's just, like, that's one where it's, like... I don't really uh, approve of any of, like, the big changes they made. Uh, I did... I, I saw it, then I then I turned back to chat to go, Yeah, I saw it, and then... Yeah. Oh, didn't see the wheel. Oh, I'm all the way at the bottom. Oh, I'm all the way at the bottom. I thought I could, I thought I could do it. Alright, well, I know it's there. I know it's there. Okay, okay. Once more with feeling. Once more with feeling. Oh, there's the hole. There it is. Uh, so, game number two that I played uh, was Ape Escape. I've played Ape Escape before. Um, uh, but I thought, hey, let's play it again. And it's uh, it's just as good as I remember. It, it's, um, if there's one thing, the level design is not as confusing as I had once played it. It's a little bit annoying. I still, like, was not 100% confident where everything was. But I definitely felt like, oh, okay, I understood the maps a little more than I did before. Uh, Ape Escape is a raw collectathon made in 1999 for the PS1. And uh, its uh, original fact, or it's a, the, the thing that sets it aside, is that uh, you have to collect monkeys with a net and you play it with a DualShock controller. Ape Escape will probably be streamed with a few 10k viewers on Twitch stream. Oh, who's playing it? I was actually, I was going to preface uh, or mention this, like, Ape Escape could be a game that I would want to play on, on stream. I don't, I, definitely not the next game. I don't want to play another collector from next. So, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll leave it for fairly later. And it's not a game I necessarily grew up with, but it's definitely one that, like, I've played a few times now, so. Uh, but yeah, no, the claim to fame of, uh, you play it with, uh, the DualShock controller, the two analog sticks. Uh, oh, didn't make it to the Oh yeah, JDQ's come up, yeah. Uh, also, yeah, I'm now thinking to myself, I gotta get that green star. Oh boy, there it is. Oh, oh, nope, 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 nope. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what's more tragic, dying, like, immediately to the wheel, or dying right at the end. Like, you take the jump, and then you're not in the right depth plane. It's happened a couple of times, hasn't it? This is why I've given myself all this extra time. Just to handle, like, these, these stars. Uh... Yeah, no, they, they look fun. My only real knowledge is with uh, this first one, and I am also somehow the owner of the iToy mini game game for the PS2. But uh, since all of them are for the PS2 afterwards, uh, I've not played them. I only know about the first one. Uh, but the first one is fairly fun. You, yeah, you, you basically... Uh, it's a, it's a collectathon where, yeah, every so... You know, a few levels or so, you get a new gadget, and the new gadget you can use to backtrack and catch more of the monkeys. Uh, but 
every single gadget is controlled with the right analog stick. Uh, you jump with R1, which seems a little odd, but it basically means that your thumb is exclusively on the analog stick. You just use the face buttons, the X square, um, triangle circle to switch between items. Uh, and different items will let you do different things to try and catch different monkeys, one being like a... Um, uh, like a sword that you can use to, to stun the monkeys, one's like a slingshot, one's like a, um, uh, like a hula hoop that lets you dash forward. Um, I think the one that you'd all often rely on that near the end of the game is, uh, one that lets you do like a tall hover jump. Um, but they're all controlled with the analog stick. So the hula hoop, you spin the analog stick. Uh, the, uh, propeller, you spin the analog stick. The, um... You get a radar and you just point exactly like where you want to, you know, point the radar. It's it's fairly intuitive. That, that made a lot more sense, just jumping right away. It's fairly intuitive in how it works, and a lot of the games, like, it, it's a little clunky to play, but it's also like, that's the charm of it, is that it's supposed to not be the easiest to catch these monkeys. You're supposed to kind of be fumbling around the controls a little bit. You're playing as a kid who's just been given all these weird tools and told to catch monkeys. Like, you know, trust the character into these scenarios. He'd be fumbling just as hard as well. So, it's good fun. It's really good fun. Um, there's a sizable number of levels. There's like 200 and something monkeys to catch, and some of them are kind of easy, some of them are a bit tricky. You got some decent bosses, um, the music is great, uh, it doesn't have, like, the loading screens are so quick. For a PS1 game, it's, it's really well presented as well. Um, the voice acting is absolutely horrendous, and it's so bad it's good. This one's gonna be fun to find all the green stars. I see one directly near Big Womp there. Hey! I love the fact that this is just like a pink bomb. Um... Okay, well we're here in one. It wasn't down, was it? It should be up, right? Oh, it is down. You've got to be kidding. Well, okay. Uh, but yeah, no, definitely a good game. Um, fairly lengthy. I'd probably, I think I had 12 hours clocked, but I don't know, I might have been sitting on some of them. Um, took a bit of time though. Uh, oh, one thing I think is kind of neat fun. Yeah, Throwback Galaxy is great, because, um, just because it's, it is like a Mario 64 level. You can tackle any star you want, and they're all just kind of scattered around. And also, I guess, uh, you know, some of the stars don't feel the most eventful, like, um, uh, Shoot Into the Wild Blue is just like, you know, the, the star's just under the platform there. Uh, but yeah, seeing a, a like, yeah, an old level reimagined, um, they, they don't do it too much in Mario. They always do, like, callbacks, but I think, like, this is the most you'll get. It's like a galaxy with, um, is this two stars or three stars? I think it's... Oh, there's three stars, yeah. I, I'm not even paying attention. Okay, so, um... Let's head over here. I know that there's the one at where Womp is. Luigi's onto something here. I know he's onto chip off the old block. I'm not hearing anything. I'm just hearing the common metal. So... Alright, let's just, uh... Also, not a, not a real cannon. I always get saddened by that. This is that one. Yeah, not too sure where the other one is, off the top of my head. Maybe we'll hear it as I walk around. Uh, you know, Ape Escape, good fun. Uh, would recommend. Um, last one is, uh... This... <laughs> I don't even know about this one. I played, uh, Stuart Little 2 for the PS1. Stuart Little is a film that I saw ages ago. Uh, they do have cannons in Mario Galaxy 2. You don't want those cannons. The Galaxy 2 cannons are too good. They're too powerful. You'd be launched into space. 
Uh, I know there's a one-up just up here. I wonder if I can just jump over the womp. Nah, nah, it's a bit far. I've got to use him though. I've got to use him. He's my he's my useful idiot. Whoa, that is that is not quite the backflip I was expecting. Hi. Oh, that wasn't quite it. That was a sliding backflip. Oh, oh, I nearly had it there. This is 100% how they intend for you to do this, right? You just gotta, like, kind of cheese the, the, the womp. Because I'm pretty sure there's not enough height to just jump. Oh, there might be just enough height to jump. Oh, boy. Maybe I'm just gonna do a triple jump off him. Oh, <laughs> I botched the triple jump. This guy must be getting very tired of... Oh. There you go. Alright, this is a triple jump. That's all that's needed. That's all that's good. Yaha! Yeah he says. Yeah. Uh, so st still a little too on the PS1. Um, yeah, I I think I'd only ever seen Stuart Little in theaters. As a kid. Maybe, maybe I saw the first one on VHS, because I think I was a bit too young for that one, but I definitely saw the second one in theaters. I think? Maybe I saw the first one in theaters and the second one on VHS. Uh, whichever the case, Stuart Little 2 is the sequel where Michael J. Fox is a, is a mouse, and he beat a bunch of other kids to the at the adoption agency. They said, nah, man, the rat. We're going with the rat. Um, so this is the other star. Because there's a cloud, yeah. I'm hearing it. I, I heard it. Maybe let's get a cloud and figure it out. Oh, there's a cloud right there, but... Another cloud over there. Okay. Oh! Remember that one. This is exactly like, you know, they're like, oh, you know, you've got the cloud mushroom, but, uh, do, do you really have the cloud mushroom? Was it here? <laughs> I can't even judge where it was again. Hold on. Back up. I think it's just halfway. Like it's right where the uh, Silver Star is sitting. Yeet! Yeet! Oh boy. Uh, touch it with my foot. <laughs> Easy. Well, that's the Throwback Galaxy done. I will miss you, Throwback Galaxy. Have a good one, Throwback Galaxy. Yeah. Uh, what happens in Still Little 2? Um, there's a... What happens in Still Little 1? I think there's a cat? There's a cat. The cat doesn't talk to people. Uh, the third star was out in s space. It was way out. Way out of size. Battle Belt Galaxy. Oh boy, this one is probably going to be one of the dullest Green Star ones because you're just going to see me do the same star multiple times. Effectively. How'd they pull three stars out of this one? Oh, I hear it. I hear it. It's already here. Ah. Oh, I see it. I see it. It's already here. That's at the end of the level as well. It's just like, you, you just got to do the level multiple times to get all, all the green stars. 
can't believe it. Yeah. Listen, I'll, I'll rip on it. <laughs> I'll rip on this level for for the green stars, like, like a, uh, oops, like a uh, throwback galaxy. It's like you know, it feels designed for the green stars, but when it's like a really linear galaxy like this, it's like yep. Yeah, it's effectively an auto scroller. Where it's like you're trying to you're trying to go fast, and you just gotta you know do the stock standard thing. Also, how many planetoids were in this galaxy? It's like seven, isn't it? Yet. I've at least got two that I can like reliably go by. Yeah, no, really, you go for the whole first. You know, it's just up here, so okay. Well, there's one. Uh, so what happens in Sulo One? So they adopt Michael J. Fox Rat, um, Hugh Laurie, and uh, is it Gina Davis? Is that the actor, actress? They adopt the rat. Um, and then uh, the rat does zany things and then gets into trouble with a cat gang where the cat that they own uh, also is part of that gang called Snowbell, the white cat. It's the, voiced by the guy who does uh, Timon in The Lion King. Fun fact. Um, I forgot the, the voice actor though, I'm sorry. Uh, the second film is basically there's a bird, and the bird is been stealing jewelry for a falcon named Falcon, and the bird is injured and doesn't want to do a life of crime. So Stuart helps the bird, and then the bird is like, cool, I'm out of here, see ya. And that's the plot of the second film, I think. I think off the top of my head. I can't remember really anything that happens. Stuart skates at some point in either of the films. I know, I remember the bit where he's on the boat, and, uh, like, they're in the boat race, and, like, the, the kid's, like, remote control, why isn't the Falcon called Bird? I don't know. It should have been, like, John Bird or something. John Bird's an actual guy, though, but you know what I mean? Like, Bird is a surname. Shower them with fire. Um, I remember a scene from the first film where, uh, the kid, like, the cause, cause Stuart Little, like, there's an actual child in the family as well, but they decided to adopt a, a mouse as well, and the mouse talks to people, um, so, but, uh, yeah, the kid enters a boat race, and then a bully breaks his controller, and so it's like, I can control it from on the boat, and then, like, he nearly dies because he's a mouse. Um, and the parents are obviously concerned because they paid good money for that mouse. <laughs> um, but I, does he win the race in the end? Something. No one finds a technicality with the mouse controlling the boat. They're like, yeah, it's fine. I guess if it's remote control, manual control probably works fine as well. Um, well, the exact same thing happens in the second film, I think, as well. There's a remote control plane, and the steward is on the plane, and then he goes. He's he's going somewhere. He goes somewhere on the plane, so sure. Um, is there a bit where he's in a car as well? Does Stuart Little have a little car? But he also still has to go to school. I don't understand Stuart Little. Anyways, point of this game is that it's a tie-in game. I didn't even realize this before playing this. Um, yeah, the pumpkin planet's cool. Pumpkin planet. Uh, I hear it's on the next one, so... Uh. Uh, but Stuart Little 2 on the PS1 is developed by Magenta Software, the same people who made Monster Muppet Madness, the game I played on my channel back in October. Um, Muppet Monster Madness was a alright uh, Spyro clone. It was very unabashedly a Spyro clone, but it had a, you know, a bunch of levels, a couple of abilities, bit stiff, 
Did okay. Sure. Um, same devs. Same game, kind of. Uh, the collect-a-thon uh, method of this game is... Uh, well, it's more like the Toy Story 2 game. You've got uh, six collectibles in the level, and they're all gotten via the same pattern. There's a little 80... Uh, I always call them, like, fish biscuits. They're actually cat biscuits, but they're shaped like fish. I guess it's just like a box of cat food. You pick... There's 80 in the level, but you only need to pick up 60, and you deliver them to a red bowl that belongs to Snowbell, and you get one of the jeweled rings as you're collecting. Uh, there's one lying out in the middle of the level. There's one, um in a chest somewhere, in a gold chest, and if you get a key somewhere in the level, and you go back to that chest, you can open it up. There's one that's, uh, there's six blocks with Stuart Little's face on them, and if you collect all six blocks, then the six blocks are used to make a passageway that leads to one of the jewels, and then each level has two little mini-games, a la Spyro 2, where, uh, you beat the mini-games and you get a piece each. Um, the pattern is, like, you know, you feel the pattern after a while, uh, but there's a little bit of, like, UX, like, inconsistency, because Snowbell's bowl is mentioned as, like, oh, you, you, you get the stuff and then you trade them with Snowbell and Snowbell gives you a ring, but also Snowbell is the character who takes you between levels, uh, but also Snowbell doesn't physically appear. You're just told that Snowbell is there. Um, and also, you don't just exit the level via the menu to go, like, you know, visit Snowbell, you also can pick up little tokens to just exit the level. There's a lot of, like, confusing things. They keep mentioning Snowbell, and it took me three levels before I even realized that, like, you press, you know, you go up to the, the, uh, the cat ball to, um, uh, to deliver the, the fish things. Because, uh, at the beginning of the game, you start at the you know, in the lower level of Stuart Little's house. It only took me until when I was not in Stuart Little's house did I realize, uh, oh, that bowl is still, like, appearing in levels. Oh, that's what it is. So I went back and I was like, oh, okay. At least all the stuff you pick up in the levels, it stays, so that's okay. Um, other than that, pretty standard collectathon stuff. Like, there's nothing too fancy. There's no, um, forced backtracking. So, you've got the ability to get everything in every level, first go. Um, still got the Muppet Monster Madness kind of stiff platforming. Uh, but, one thing I kind of felt, and I tried, like, evaluating this to myself, uh, the level design always, it consists of a bunch of, like, rooms that are obviously bigger than Stuart Little. Um, but, uh, but the rooms are connected via, like, you know, a vent on the ground, or, uh, you know, a door being open, or just like, you know, there's a, there's a pod way to get to each room. And then, it's like, there's no real, like, flow to the levels, it's just a bunch of rooms, where in each room there's now a linear path where you climb up, like, things to basically get some stuff. But, there's no, like, flow between the rooms when it comes to that, you just kind of climb up the rooms. Um, so it's a little bit uninspiring in the level design uh, part. I, ne I then tried to cross-refer back to the Toy Story 2 game, because I was like, well, that game's got a few levels that are just, you know, big rooms connected, but... I feel like there's a number of levels in the Toy Story 2 game that they do flow pretty, pretty nicely. There's the, um, uh, the Alleys and Gullies level, uh, which has all the, um, zip lines all over the place, and that is an intentionally, like, separate by the, the level. Um, I really liked the, uh, the lift level where you've just got this long corridor that surrounds the main, like, chamber of the level, and then, then, then you've just got, you know, massive bits of verticality to deal with. Plane level at the end of the game, you know, that, that one's pretty, you know, memorable in that regard. Um, these are probably some of the dullest green stars in the whole game, isn't it? It's like, you know they're there, they're all on top of the locked <laughs> bits, but... You gotta do the level three times, effectively. Okay. Um, yeah, whereas in Stuart Little, I don't know, like, I think the other thing that kind of hurts is that, at least with Toy Story, it's like, airports are cool, um, like, lifts are cool, Stuart Little 2, like, okay, there's outdoors, there's, um, yeah, two levels are outdoors, two levels are in Stuart Little's house, uh, 
One level is out in the back, like, or in, like, the sewers, and then the sewers obviously have, like, electrical, like, machines everywhere, because of course they do. And then one of the, the last level takes place on a, um, like, a garbage freighter. So there's, like, garbage on the ship, but it's also not that big a ship. Like, it's actually a fairly small level, now that I think about it. It's, yeah, there's not really too much going on. Um, and yes, six levels. I, I want to note, I beat the game in two hours fifty. I've never seen the game before. I know it's a bit of a game for children, sure. Uh, yeah, it, it, like, it's definitely a, a bizarre tying game, I guess. Uh, but, oh boy, that length is horrendous. Um... Like, I, I, I don't, I don't feel rebuffed, it's not like I paid for the game necessarily, but it's definitely like, man, you know, like, uh, that's, that's not a lot of content, considering, um, out of the 36 jewels that you're expected to, well, that exists in the game, you're, you're required to collect 30 of them, you're required to do, uh, large, you know, a lot of the game at least. Um, the only other things to collect are, uh, little film clip things that you can, uh, pick up. Um, and they're just separate, they give you a little film clip from the film. Makes sense, right? Um, yeah, the tie-in, like, movie tie-ins back then, like, were kind of interesting. Uh, I think I got a sneeze. Oh my gosh, there we go. I really want to- oh! Yoshta! No, 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 no! Still no! Okay, Yoshi, really. Really, Yoshi. I have killed your fruit. You shall not eat anymore. Um... But yeah, yeah, it's a bit of a- bit of an odd one, but it's not like- it's not too crazy weird. Like, yeah, a lot of these licensed games did, you know, diverge from the source material in various ways, but they never were like too outlandish for, you know, like, what happens in the film. Oh boy, I'm coming. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The, the cargo freight, the garbage ship at the end, I'm not too sure, but the minigames... Oh, they were? They were weirder? There were some weird ones. I remember having a Shrek game on... I, I still have it. It's on the shelf. I've got a Shrek game on the GBA. It involves, like, Lord Farquaad coming back as a ghost. And then effectively just turning everyone evil. I don't know, just he does that. Um, and I know Lord Farquaad comes as a ghost in the Shrek 4D ride, which appears at uh, Warner Brothers Movie World. I, it might not be there anymore. It was definitely at Universal when I went up like eight years ago. Angry, average, angry video game, no license figure. True, actually, yeah. No, they were even weirder way back when. I think the thing with the Stuart Little 2 game, it, it came out in 2002. And also, I'm not too sure if there is a PS2 version of the game. I think there's only a PS1 version. So it's a PS1 only game in 2002. You know, the same year as Ratchet and Clank and Metro Prime. And, uh... The Xbox also launched. So, uh... Well, the Xbox already had come out. That's like the Xbox game back then. Like... Like the Xbox game of 2002. I'd say, yeah, just halfway between Halo 1 and 2. We'll just say that. It's like... Uh, remarkably like late and there's I think there's only like 20 or so ps2 games that came out after like 2002 um, so yeah it's it, it, okay if anything I think the Stuart Little game is pretty tame because it just happens nothing really too much about it but uh, I thought it was kind of interesting just as a like it's a game Someone, like, made the game and charged money for this game. And I'm thinking, like, man, you know, like, this is a developer who, at the very least, they had, uh, Muppet Monster Madness earlier. They had a game that worked. Well, oh, sorry, like, I mean, I know this game works as well. Uh, the minigames, by the way, they're not that engaging. One of them is, like, Stuart's on a skateboard and he picks up stars. And I noticed at one point, like, I think the second one, so it was on the, the garbage ship, um... The description said pick up all, uh, all, um, 25 stars, and there were 30 of them. So it felt like, okay, like, they didn't really proofread their own game. Um, oh boy, where's the green star? Is it right at the end? Again. 
Oh, well, that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of weird licensed games out there. Uh, yeah, I don't think Steel Law was one of them. Um, another another mini game was uh, you're flying a plane and you can only steer it left and right and the plane kind of follows a track and you just kind of have to follow the plane through some checkpoints. Um, there's another one which is like Stuart's on a little toy train and you've just got to lean and pick up stars. There's a lot of star picking up, I realize. More star picking up than this game, apparently. Um, so none of them are really that, like, interesting. Breaks up the flow a little bit. But, they just kind of happen. Uh, and yeah, I, I said six levels. They they all take about 20-something minutes to beat. Um, if I knew what I was doing a little earlier, it might have been a little quicker as well. Uh, it ends with a final boss where you fly a plane, and this time you fly the plane by, um, like, Star Fox control. Where it's like it's moving on a rail, but you can, you know, move in four directions. Uh, like, otherwise, you line up to, um, to pick up batteries, and once you picked up enough batteries, you press X, and you dash into the bird, Talon. I keep calling him Talon, it's Falcon. Um, and then you win, and that's that. And the game just ends, and it lists ten people in the credits. It doesn't even list, like, what anyone did. It just lists the, like, the ten people at Magenta who made the game. Um, if I had to say some pluses, it works, at the very least. Um, I kind of like the idea of just the brevity of it's a little level select that just has a list of levels. Um, Stuart Little's model is actually pretty alright for the PS1. Uh, the rest of the models, maybe not as much. But, you know, it, it works as a game. Um, but it's just so, it's so basic. It's so bland and basic. And it's just like, oh my gosh, like... I see this one. I see it. Don't worry. It's even got the shadow there. You can't turn the camera, you just have to kind of feel your way for it. Um, what else, what else? Uh, the music's a bit, like, it's not bad, but it feels like it's, um, you know, overly dramatic for where Stuart is, what Stuart is doing, and, like, it feels very much like they're trying to be, uh, like, um, uh, I, don't, I forgot who the voice, the, um, uh, composer of the, uh, the Toy Story 2 music is on the on the PS1, and he's done music for a couple of other Traveler's Tales games, I know that. Um, but it's like, he's got like a nice like dramatic tone, and I feel like, eh, there's a, there's a bit of urgency with, uh, with um, Toy Story 2, because it's like, you, you're trying to find Woody. There's a bit of like, okay, sure, there's that. Um, but with, uh, do a little too. I'm like, I don't know, the bird's fine. You kind of just like you're collecting the jewels at your own pace. It just kind of feels like that. And then last one, and this is a kind of like weird part of um of this game. Uh, lots of PS1 games that are licensed, they'll always do the whole you know like there's full motion video clips between levels. Um, since there's only six levels, there's only 15 clips, uh, so it's about 12 minutes of the movie, but sure, okay. Um, but, uh, two things with it. One, they're oddly out of order. In level five, it starts off with the scene where Margalo, the bird, falls into Stuart Little's car and they introduce each other. This is after Margalo was the person doing the tutorial and also the reason why you're on your adventure, and also she's shown up in other full motion video sequences uh, as just a character. They never properly introduce her until this part of the game. Um, so it feels very odd. Uh, and then it makes me wonder how much of the rest of the game is out of order. I finally learned to just like dive straight through it. You're happy, I'm happy. I'm very concerned. That... That is the cheekiest green star. That is the cheekiest green star. Did you even know that there was a... There was a one up there? That's so cheeky. I heard it and I was like, oh boy. Oh boy, don't commit to the launch star. Uh, uh, and then number two weird part about the full motion video sequences. There's no music in them. 
as in they didn't take any of the music from the film but they've used the scenes from the film so you end up having full motion video sequences that are so like they're silent there, there's parts where nothing is like you can't hear anything and there's nothing to like try and you know swing swing your mood in some way it's like you know here's a character they made a joke and there's no musical cue to go with it um the sound effects as well so it's like some uh, <laughs> It's a very weird tone. It's completely weird. Um, I thought maybe I was going insane, so I'm like, okay, who's a person who's reviewed like a bunch of like old PS1 games? And I found a, a review by Kadikaris back in 2016, and it's like, yeah, I mean, some of his stuff like, I, like is played a bit for laughs, but like, you know, generally I was like, yeah, it takes all right. But he's like, he's very positive on that game. He's, he's like, yeah, no, it's it's great, and it's like, you know, the right length, and I'm like, it's two and a half hours, it's, well, three hours, I, I'm, I'm, it's, it's very short, I, like, I don't mind a game that doesn't waste my time, but it's also like, it's so unsubstantial, and especially given that they've made a better, like, game before, it feels like they just wanted to make half a game, and try and get the full capitalization on it. Oh, that's a spot. That's a spot. Uh, also, that's one out of the two stars. <laughs> that's uh, that's surprising. There I go. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I think what's bizarre about that uh, that still little game is I could probably talk about it for longer than it actually takes to beat it. And that might make it somewhat intriguing to show on stream. But I don't know if it necessarily will be. I gotta think of like more games to play though, so who knows. I might I might scrape some bottom of the barrel. Um, but generally, like every game that I have played has always been something that like, you know, I've had some personal attachment to. Or it's Golden Sun. Which I played blind. Or well, Final Fantasy VII, which I also played blind. But like, uh, games that like, I, I felt like, you know, pretty decent with. And uh, that leads me back to Mario Galaxy 2, which, uh, you know, we're, we're near in the end. We're 227 stars, there are 13, cough cough, left in the game, uh, but... Uh, you know, this is the last star of World 6, and World S is a lot quicker when you think about it. Because every, every galaxy only has two stars, and they're also not the longest. They might be tricky, but they're not the longest. Uh, but doing the green star hunt has been kind of intriguing, because I feel like a lot of people maybe don't remember the green star hunt. Like, they might have done it, and then they know what's at the end of the game. But then, like, you know, anytime you want to consider replaying the game, there's a bit of Z drawing going on there. Not too, not too sure what's going on there, but sure. Uh, Alright, let's listen out for the other green star. I'm thinking it's probably in the uh, block bit at the end. Look at that, I'm outrunning the... Oh. Here I go! Ah! Oh. So close. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking the green star is probably uh, better hidden somewhere around here. I didn't hear it, so... There we go. Can I do the cheeky jump? Can I, can I go into the little cheeky corridor? You're not the one. I want to I wanna get it done, but... Uh... Yeah, nah. I didn't understand Kadikaris' uh, opinion on Stuart Little, so... I would not salvage that game, let's just say that. It's not bad, but it's, uh... It's a game. And nothing more than that, so... Uh... But, uh this game's been great, though. I've, I've definitely enjoyed playing through this game again, and it feels kind of good, a little cathartic, to, like finally be beating some of these games on my channel. Um, 
because uh, because yeah, because Super Mario Galaxy 2 was one that I had just I guess inexplicably. I think the reason why I stopped playing it was because of uh, my capture device setup, which now uh, in some uh, twist. Uh, I'm now back in the emulating scene, and it emulates pretty fine, except for uh, Melted Modern Galaxy was a bit questionable on... Oh boy, I needed to preserve those clouds, didn't I? Like I could use Yoshi. But I'm going to be taking a huge shot in the dark on this one. Oh wait, no, you can't use Yoshi because then you don't get the cloud. I didn't just hit a, a flag, did I? Nice. Well, is this the point in time that I prove my myself myself being by mastering the infinite flutter? Uh, let's practice it in safety. How do I do it? Uh, nope. I'm not quite get it. Nope, that's an actual crown pad. That's what you gotta do, you gotta give it a... Oh, I, I had it there once. I had it there once. I love how this platform is uh, clipping the ground a little bit. There it goes. I'm not getting it. I'm not getting the infinite flutter. I'm, I'm, I'm not able to pull off. Nah, nah. We'll, we'll, we'll concede. Oops. <laughs> we'll concede alive, apparently. I'll concede back to the beginning. We'll preserve the cloud and not hit that, not hit that checkpoint. Ah, oh, that I. Can't believe they'd do this to me. Yeah. Uh, so I've got some things I've, I can rant about today. Uh, I think the first thing that I want to rant about is a little bit of a um. I didn't watch any of the any of the um, indie live stuff. I really need to <laughs> to watch it so I can comment on it. But uh, um, I really want to do a small rant about a uh, a certain game that I did bring up last week. And, uh, it's now out, and, uh, I've realized, uh, it, it's left a sour taste in my mouth, and that is Sonic Origins. Uh, Sonic Origins is a remaster collection of Sonic 1, 2, 3, Knuckles, and CD. Uh, all five of these games were on Steam, um, and, uh, I'm not too sure if Sonic CD is on the Switch, but pretty much most of them are on other platforms. Uh, the, the Sega Mega Drive Genesis uh, collection it has been on other platforms for so long. Um, although, kind of curiously, I looked it up, uh, apparently the selection of games is kind of varied between consoles. Um, some consoles get all the games, some didn't. Definitely the Steam version did, so there's that. Um, did. I want to highlight that word, because if you go onto steampower.com and when you're greeted by the sale uh, you will notice that Sonic 1, 2, 3 and Knuckles and Sonic CD are all delisted. They do not exist on Steam anymore. You can only purchase these games by purchasing Sonic Origins. Now the Sonic CD port was uh, that was a Christian Whitehead like project from, uh, ages ago. I think it was like 2011. I think it was it was a fairly old release. Um, old old Need for Speed game Sonic. Yeah, I I don't like the the delisting. I'll I'll get into this whole idea of like uh, delisting games, but um, in particular, like this example, like yeah, the the Sonic CD game I think was 15 bucks Australian. Um, oh boy, let's get this. Uh, 
But yeah, no, so it used to be, I think, like 15 bucks, so let's say like 10 US. Because um, then you could say Sonic Origins is 40 US. Keep that in mind. And then I'm very certain that Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles were seven and a half dollars. They were half the price. This would have added up to, um, let's see, 28 bucks, 14, it's sort of have to maybe like 50 bucks. The uh, Japanese devs are discovering the PC in the second half of it. Yeah, it's, there's some Japanese devs that like PC has always been a part of their platform and then there's just some where it's like not at all really. Um, I think like you're, you're finding it now with a uh, every EDF game. Oh, true, yeah. I need to save myself. I need to save myself. Oh, I need, I need to save all the... Uh, Yeah, definitely, if if a company can do a good PC port, it's like, that lasts. Um, but yeah, no, with, with Sonic Origins, like, the reason why I'm very, very upset is because, yes, they have taken down these versions of the games, and, like, yeah, I guess, okay, there's a replacement version, but are they necessarily the superior versions of the game? They're a new version for the sake of there being a new version. Now, I guess, on a... On, um, well, I was gonna say on the PD5, uh, Earth Defense Force, yeah, yeah. I know of it, but I've not played it. Um, how many clouds do I have left? One? One cloud's all I need. So here's a question do you land on the checkpoint or can I just walk around it? I can walk around it. And it's a little bit off center as well. That's nice. Alright, stuff you, Magic Koopa. Alright, here I go. Oh boy, one cloud is... Oh boy. Uh, speedruns, I, I know of like some speedruns, but I don't like... I'm not too like avidly following them. I know of like, um, who's the guy with the, you know, talking about parallel universes. And I've actually, I've, I've looked into it, I can do a 16 star run on Super Mario 64. So I do really like Super Mario 64 to some degree. Uh, but it's definitely a bit of a solved game as well. Um, but, but, yeah, with, with Sonic Origins, like, yeah, I, I don't necessarily know if you're getting the best version of all these games. Uh, there's some features you're not getting, like, uh, the Mega Drive collection had, um, pretty well done. One hand almost par- oh, jeez, yeah. Ooh, one hand spirits. Good on him, good on him for continuing on. Um, the, uh, the, yeah, it, the Mega Drive collection on Steam and on other consoles has online play, effectively emulating the split screen, the two player, but that's effectively, you know, that's a feature that this game does not have, so Origins. There's two green stars somewhere on this level. I guess it's as good as mine where the green star is, but... I'm here, oh, now I'm seeing it. Oh, you gotta lucky dip the platform. Speed of uh, EDF DLC into a map. Oh, nice. Get on him. Oh, I wonder which one it is. I wonder which one it is. Oh. Oh, the other one's over there. This is what I mean. It's like, eh, you know, these special, these special levels, it's, uh, they're a bit easy. So I'm going to be, like, blitzing these last few levels. Accessibility issues is always good if you can sort that out. Because, yeah, like, there, there are some people who are unable to play games with two hands, and... Oh, I picked up number two first. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so, I'm, I'm very upset about Sonic Origins doing that. Uh, there's, there's, uh, I'm not too sure if, like, some of the Sonic CD bonuses are... Um, are available in uh, Sonic Origins as well. I guess they've, you know, they brought forward new features with Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. Um, and obviously they're on widescreen and they're not just ported, or, you know, emulated versions, uh, on the machines. But still, I think the point is, these are the same games that, one, a lot of people probably have already owned in a lot of ways on various other consoles. Um, but also, like, now that they're the only ways to buy the games again, because they've taken them down from all the storefronts, uh, and they're charging more for it, and 
I'm gonna say one word. De Nuvo. I'm... I, I personally don't mind De Nuvo. I've never had, like, any major issues with it. But some people do. And it kind of rubs me the wrong way that this is a Sega Mega Drive game that suddenly now has De Nuvo. I guess it's five Mega Drive games and... Well, four. Four on a, Se <laughs> and a Mega CD, but still. Um... Yeah, good, good on him for, for continuing on and, and pushing through, but yeah, yeah, lots of, lots of like these PC games, um, or sorry, lots of these older games and they get like PC remasters or re-releases, um, but yeah, I, I absolutely hate the idea of removing old versions just to push new ones. I think I have openly like, you know, condemned, I'm going to use condemned strongly on this one. I've hated uh, Gearbox removing old versions of Duke Nukem 3D, uh, the 3D Realms version, and the... Uh, was it Devolver who did the Megaton edition? Um, purely just to sell their own version for more money than what the other ones were sold for. And yeah, it's got that new Episode 5. It also doesn't have the e expansion episodes, or the, the expansion, like, you know, levels. And yeah, I guess, like, you know, the... the the Christmas one sucks, yes, but, uh, you know, there's no way to pl to buy it except, and I say except, uh, a platform called the Zoom platform, wonderful name by the way, um, oh, I'm going, I'm going, uh, ask your sister's boyfriend on, yeah, yeah, De Nuvo, like, the, the high level explanation that I know of is that, like, De Nuvo is very lightweight. It's just that you have to, like, check. You have to check that the user is authorized uh, via De Nuvo at some point. Some games do that check so many times, mid-game, it's horrendous. And that's what leads to De Nuvo's poor reputation, is a poor application of it. There are some examples, like um, Doom Eternal, which yeah, they did have De Nuvo, uh, it, and yeah, I know Doom Eternal had that, um, yeah, that's a, that's a cheeky spot, can I roll back? If I could turn back time... Well, I, like, it, it is a two-part problem, because it's like, you know, I, I as, as a dev myself, it's like we have a, a, a saying of the pit of success, where you, where if you want someone to use your thing, you have to make them not fail in like, a as much as possible. You have to make it as foolproof as possible, because you know, deep down, people are going to use something differently to how you intend it. Um, De Nuvo does fail in that regard. There are so many applications of De Nuvo that do suffer, and De Nuvo's name has to be slapped all over it. Oh, that's a, that's a green star and a half, and I'm not getting that one, so. Um, yeah, yeah, um, and, and yeah, yeah, just just the fact that there are examples of games with Denuvo that don't suffer. Um, and I'm not, I'm not saying Sonic Man Sonic Mania, uh, Sonic Origins, I'm not saying that suffers, either. I just only hate the idea of there being Denuvo on Sonic 1. It's, it's just, it's an old game that's been on like 50 million consoles. You don't need to copyright it. You don't, well, you, you need to copyright it. You don't need, you don't need to do DRM for it. It's, it's Sonic the Hedgehog. And also, Denuvo isn't, like, flawless anyways. It doesn't, you know, perfectly protect games from being cracked. Although, it does seem to be doing a good job of having to require people to do individual cracks for individual games. And it's not the only, like, you know, DRM platform to ever do that, so... Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm just most mostly salty at just... That's the only way to play Sonic 1 now. And, and... Unlike other forms of licensing, like I think you mentioned the Need for Speed uh, games, or oh, oh, work colleague told me that an old company worked for a store chain, they optimized code by realizing, hey, we don't need to do the check if yesterday was a holiday, or not every time the check was made at the checkout because the result won't change. Uh, definitely having those optimizations is important. Um, we figured that out by, like, unit testing um, as reliably as possible. Sometimes it's easy to write code and then to write a test that asserts exactly what the code you wrote did. Like, which isn't most, it's not the most helpful thing if it's like, well, I mean, do you actually want to validate that the code does step for step this, or do you want to just know that it reaches some outcome? And so that's a case where it's like, you know, you can do an optimization, you can fix a bit of code, and if your test is written properly, 
it doesn't change. It just stays the exact same because what you asserted stays the same. Uh, many developers make the mistake of writing working code and not fixing it. Oh, oh snap, I got it. Cool. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, it's... Uh, what's the term? Measure twice, cut once? It's good, it's good to measure twice in, in programming. Having, having a lot of checks. And, uh, and, uh, not necessarily going with the immediate solution, but at least reasoning with why you went with an immediate solution. Because I, I feel like an immediate solution, like, works more often than not. But it's just like, why did you go for it? It's good to go with that. Um, uh, but yeah, you mentioned the Need for Speed games being delisted earlier. Uh, that one's for a different reason, I guess, where it's like, they don't have the license to the cars anymore. But to that I go, why are there so many of these games that don't have perpetual licenses? I guess there's a lot of things like films and stuff. And they get like, uh, you know, lots of royalties every single time the film ever comes back. But to that I go, why can't the royalties be perpetual? Like, Grand Theft Auto 4 is a big game. I don't know who, like, as a musician would not want their music in GTA 4 10 years after its release. But, you know, in the world of constant updates and stuff like that, anyone who had owned GTA 4 I guess you can install off disk because it's it's old enough for that. Uh, but anyone who, say for example, you owned on Steam, uh, had had owned uh, GTA 4, you now suddenly don't get um, uh, you know, uh, what is it? When Love Takes Over by David Guetta. And I, I'm like, we know that song. Why is that? It, wait, oh, is that? No, I think that's still in the game. There's some songs. Okay, let's pull back. Oh snap! You can't go too slow. <laughs> done. Um, but it's just like, yeah, the, uh, it's so weird that, like, you make a game and you can't just keep selling that game. Even weird things, like I remember when Guitar Hero uh, DLC came out and they didn't have the rights for a lot of the songs to be released or to be played in other games. So they had to renegotiate licenses. Um, and yeah, not every song was, like, forward portable into other Guitar Hero games. Uh, particularly, like, the, um, the Jimi Hendrix songs in Guitar Hero World Tour. Couldn't play them in the newer games. Granted, I guess you didn't buy the older games to, to necessarily port them into newer games. And a lot of people did the cheeky thing of just, like, copying other people's codes. Okay, it's to the right after... Oh, it's after the jump, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry, it's down there. I uh, think people, uh, different way for different countries, so listen, Germany, pe people who already had the game, uh, still have that music, the new buyers just don't get the song. Uh, Vice City was like that for GDA, but San Andreas wasn't for me. Suddenly it's like, I now own the, or rather, like, if I download San Andreas, I have to download the new fancy version that lacks killing in the name of. I, I hate it. And I hate this idea that it's like, you know, I bought this game ages ago and now suddenly I can't play the version that I played ages ago. Why? I don't know. I think, you know, there really should be, I'm not saying, uh, Battle Realms? I don't know Battle Realms. And I gotta sneeze again. Eh. Oh. <laughs> there it is. We did it, sneeze twice. Uh, don't really like EA long, long time. Which we reach agreement on the Lord of Rings licenses that people can enjoy Battle for Middle Earth 1 and 2. They did a cheeky thing. Ooh, what they do? When the Lord of the Rings films came out. Yeah, I had the movie license. Yeah, I know. I know that I had the, the license to. Um, I can't remember. They did the video games at the time, so the book license and they made a Lord of the Rings game as well. Ooh. Oh boy, this galaxy just getting those green stars just sitting there. Uh, of course, not using any of the design from the movies. Decently fun game. Yeah. But, yeah, I guess, like, music, delisting games because of music licenses, like, it's different. I understand a little more. I hate that it happens. But I understand why it happens. The only reason why I ground pounded there is because I'm gonna need it. Uh, I like the, the design of the ring race. Ooh, neat. Um, 
Yes. The only reason why Sonic Origins is now the only way to buy the old Sonic games is exclusively to sell the new collection. It's exclusively to sell that. Because, like, Sometimes, and you get this on PC quite a fair bit, and it's it's so stupid. Games get delisted because, yeah, they want to sell the new version, but often the new version is made because it's now the only version for that console. And as much as like I'm ripping into like them removing these old versions of Sonic, there was no way to play Sonic CD on any of the current consoles. I think. I think the PS3, Xbox 360 version was never ported to um, the Switch or to the PS4 or the Xbox One. But, does that justify taking down Sonic 1, 2, uh, you know, does that justify any of that? No, it doesn't. Does, does taking the, and, and especially on PC. And I have this huge problem where if it works on a platform, exactly what you said, exactly what you said. If it's, if it's on a platform and you really want to sell the new version, always bundle the old version. Because then at least one, people can justify the price a little more as well. They're not like, oh, you're gouging me out and making me pay more for the same product. It's like, you're making me pay more for more. Uh, the Bioshock remasters did a good job on Steam because they give the old version exactly as it is. Um, they even used to have games from Windows Live and they got rid of that before the remasters. So it's technically not the original versions, but it's like, eh, it's, 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 they got rid of the DRM, that's fine. Um, uh, well, I need to buy the new... I am looking over and I, I'm... Uh, I, okay, real talk, like, digital hosting is cheap when you're doing it under such a massive scale. As much as, like, yeah, Steam is incurring, like, you know, a cost of having to host all these games everywhere all the time. Um, like, the fact that they do it for, uh, at this point, hundreds of thousands of games, because there's a lot of... There's a lot of trash on Steam. And if you've, uh, if you've been paying attention to the Steam sale and you've having to be browsing through all the coming soon category, you'd notice a lot of these really trashy titles that were just sitting there, so... Uh, but yeah, the, there are a lot of older games that, like, I do wish were still there. And in fact, there's some that are just like, why are they gone? I think I, I noted, um, Prey 2006 used to be on Steam. And they took it down, I assume, to not confuse people with the new... Prey 2012. I'm trying to... Oh, okay, there it is. I've only got one cloud, so I'm gonna have to make this one count. Oh boy. There we go. All good. Um, any games we've sold 10 bucks and still return across? Oh, it does not cost 10 bucks to, to host games. It costs so much less. That it legitimately does not cost that much. Considering, one, like, yeah, every person downloading your game paid for it, so you've already got that as like you're, you're effectively just going for the average number of downloads per user, and that's usually not a high number. A lot of people don't download the game more than like twice. Some people do. Some people do do end up spamming it, but I don't think Steve's got necessarily a problem with that. Um, good guy Microsoft just calling the Age of Empires 2 HD version, Age of Empires 2 2013. Yeah, calling it by its year is pretty alright. Um, I, I'm still under the impression where it's like, yeah, if the game works on a console, I don't really think there's a reason to get rid of it. But yeah, good on him, because now there's, um, yeah, three versions of Age of Empires 2, but at least they're, you know, they're open about, uh, the different versions. And they still sell the old ones, don't they? Like, they don't sell 1999, I believe. Um, but they do sell, I, I always got that one, they're fine. Uh, where was the first screen sale? I was inside. Yeah, selling both versions? Cool. I think there's a... The... What's another one? Um... I'm trying to recall another one where it's like those two old versions. Oh! I I love how I was noting, um... Uh... Duke Nukem 3D being taken down. Uh, but, um, on... Steam, you can get Shadow Warrior, and, and, and I note this on my Steam profile, you can get Shadow Warrior Classic, which is uh, a DOS version of Shadow Warrior. It's actually the full, like, shareware game. It's amazing that, like, they're just like, eh, who cares? Um, but you can also buy uh, Shadow Warrior Classic um, Redux, which is the Devolver version 
of the full game, but it's also like it's the Devolver version, so you know it's got it's got some extra goodies. It's got the DLCs, uh, and then you can also get a Shadow Warrior as part of the 3D Realms anthology. Three separate versions of the exact same game. Uh, oh yeah, I remember the screen size. Yeah, being an absolute like pain to get because you got to deal with this curve. And it's like, it's higher up, and it, oh boy, I got slammed sideways there. Um, you can no longer buy the original Dark Souls piece release, yeah. Yeah, that one's another sad one. You know what's the worst part? I remember someone going like, oh, but you know, one problem with the old Dark Souls is it's got games for Windows Live, to which I go, bull, I played it like a few months ago. Like, yeah, it does have games for Windows Live, but it doesn't stop you. It, I, I've never had games for Windows Live legitimately stop me. Because it's like, your, your key works, and you can register, that system still works. Um, some people got salty. Uh, it is a poor port, I, I do agree. I don't think the new one is entirely, like, I think it is, oh, sorry, I think it is entirely a better port from the sounds, but it's also, like, I bought the original Dark Souls for five US dollars. The remaster now costs fifty-seven dollars, and it's not on sale. They also gave a loyalty discount for two years, and now they don't give a loyalty discount. I would bump, yeah, I would hundred percent bump up the old one. Also because mods. Oh, that's a cheeky jump. That's a cheeky jump. Um, I think with Skyrim, Skyrim's a bit of a weird one. The old version is like it's unlisted. It's not delisted. It just doesn't appear in searches. But if you go to its store page, it does still have a price. You can still buy the original Skyrim, uh, not the special edition. Um, yeah, the, the execution's better. Um, but I, I'm still under the, the... My principle is, like, still, the old version runs. It runs... It, it runs well. It's just that it has so many self-imposed limits, it can't scale. It doesn't... It runs at 30 FPS. It has a fixed internal resolution, so it doesn't matter what you set your screen resolution to. Um, the mouse support's kind of jank. I'm not too sure if they fixed any of that, really. I know it runs at 1080, 60. Uh, the new player on PC is like, okay, let me try, try the original. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's stuff like that. Although, to some degree, I go, could they not just update, like, the old version? Um, or even better, oh, like, just give you the new version. Why are they charging for it? Because, like, uh, there's a lot of these, like, you know, enhanced versions or fancy editions. That just, they don't add anything. Dark Souls 2 is the best one here, though. I have not played, I've, I've only played the first one, so I, that's the only one I know of. Um, I'm burning, oh, I was going to say I'm burning through my lives, but no, I'm not really. Keep that in mind, by the way. Keep that in mind how many lives I'm, I'm sitting on. This is a very important point. Uh, but yeah, there's a. Uh, I guess okay. So so let me let me lay out my rules. Here, here's my rules. If your game is for a platform, do not remove the old version. Don't. If you really want to remove the old version, as in not let people buy it you know, loyalty discount, and, and it, forever loyalty discount as well, and also bundle in the old one with the new one. Because, like, yeah, I, if you want me to buy the, you know, your new version of Dark Souls, and I already own the old one, and you obviously want me to buy the new one, but it's like, it's 57 bucks, I've already played the old one, what do I get out of it? Nothing. Uh, apart from, yeah, it runs better. Which, it feels very odd. That is, that's a mean one. Yeah, or give it a discount. Um, or even better, if you want to be really nice, you give it for free. Because all you're doing for Dark Souls Remastered is making the same game run better. Like, yeah, you're, you're putting in work. I understand that. But you're making the old game run better. You're not even adding new features, new anything, really. This runs better. If anything as well, it's a slightly lesser version because it's got the online removed. Uh, 
that one's a bit of it. That one's a bit of an easy, easy blow though. But you know what I mean? It's just like, like again, they're charging for this, and it's not even the, the complete version of the game. I remember some games like uh, Battlefield 2. They've removed, they've delisted from Steam, and it's because the game spy servers are down. And despite the fact that there's community servers available, you can easily. This is such a weird jump, isn't it? Oh, I got it. Second guy. Second guy. Um, but yeah, like, you can't... I think you can't authenticate the game anymore. And that kind of sucks. That really sucks. But it's still just like, I don't know, man. You could, like, just charge the game less. Go, you're going to have to figure out how to authenticate this game. And people would still buy it. If you're really open and candid about, like, how... You know, how a game's current functionality works. You just need, like, one person to check in every year. To see, like, is the game still work? And just update the description based on that. Everyone's favorite galaxy, by the way, boss bits. Oh boy. Also, I it just clicked in my head, there's only two galaxies left! <clears throat> I know, right? Amazing! Two galaxies left. Can't you believe it? Almost Christmas. It's Christmas time. There's one green star. Six more, uh, four more! Cough, cough. There's four more stars. I... I'm not getting out of it, no. Well, so that, that's why that's why I gave myself a little bit of extra leeway at the beginning of the stream. For, like, like I only had, um, 206 stars gotten. Rather than, like, 200. That's right, I gotta fight Dino Piranha yet again. It's been how many months since I last fought Dino Piranha? One, I think. I'm just like completely autopilot mode beating Dino Piranha now, I swear. It's kind of annoying you gotta fight like both Dino Piranhas in, uh, in this level as well. But I can guarantee at least we're not gonna have to beat the last one. King Caliente, is the... No, it's not on the bottom. Oh boy, I gotta, I gotta fight King Caliente. Oops. Uh, any other examples of ports remasters that I feel are worthless? You wanna know what's like, I guess, the worst part is that there's clear examples of like the ports remasters done in a way that won't peep me off. I, I mentioned the Bioshock one, I will rip into Borderlands, but at the very least, both versions of the game are there, including the uh, the Game of the Year edition that was there, Skyrim. Skyrim, oh, Skyrim, I gotta pay for that Anniversary Edition, and I know that the Anniversary Edition is just the Special Edition with, you know, more stuff, but... Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, it, it, in that case of, like, yeah, it splits the modern community, um... Yeah, it's, it's not, it's not, not particularly great. And, yeah, the Special Edition didn't really, like... Like, I don't, I don't mind the idea of, um... Actually, no. No, I can't, I can't even think of it. All I can think is, like, well, they wanted to make a special fancy version, and yeah, it was a special fancy version, but, you know, it's, it, it diverges from <coughs> from the version that people want to play. Um, trying to think of another one. Uh, I think you get the gist. Mass Effect, we'll go with that one. Although, actually, they, they do sell the original versions of Mass Effect still on Origin. So, they've got that at least. I think they do. Hopefully they do. That one's another one where it's like, yeah, they changed Mass Effect 1 somewhat significantly, and now it's just like the old version, like, you know, maybe it is jank, but if it's not there, then, eh. Sky Blivian guys on my special edition, even though now it's a 64-bit application officially, does not actually offer what that would imply. Oh, as in, you know, increased memory capacity. Or access range. That's the only benefit you get really out of being on a 64-bit. Maybe there's like extra instructions that you can use, but I don't think anyone programs that low down. I think it's only, you know... You don't have to map. You don't have to like, create a uh, memory banks effectively. And no, no one writing PC programs really likes working with memory banks. There is that one, like, uh... 
I love how the, the, the ghost is just crouching this whole time as well. I love that um that one tool by the way that like unlocks um like two gigabyte or rather old 32 bit programs. It unlocks them from being bound by two gigabytes to move up to four by just like removing like an unsigned part of the I don't know. I don't know how it works exactly, but that was an interesting one. Oh, it's not even properly. Oh, it's in the engine like panics, anyways. Ah, oh, what the heck? Come on, can't believe it. So. That one's an interesting one. When the um, when 64-bit programs like they're kind of de facto now. Like, there's not really any reason to do 32-bit because like. You know, how many people are still on a 32-bit system? Some people might, but, eh, I mean, I'm not really getting anything out of it. But it's also kind of like, it's no cost. There's no plans to decommission 32-bit program support, uh, which is very surprising, I guess, given how quickly Microsoft did drop 16-bit program support in Windows uh, XP, I believe? No, uh, it was ME. It's not- I think it, it- I think it is surprising how long it stayed. Like, Microsoft are pretty notorious for maintaining weird, like, legacy things. Um... Uh, it, it's- it's... Yeah, oh, it's... It's more than industry software. Like, open up Task Manager right now, and if you see any program with 32-bit, um... Like, next to it, like... You know, that, that's one where it's like, you know, you'd be caught out if they dropped 32-bit support. How much of COBOL is still in use? I know COBOL is nowhere near as popular as, like, maybe once was used. Um, I, don't, I, I don't know why I thought you could catch it from. Uh, it is still used. Some people will still, you know, create some new tools bravely in COBOL. Um, but definitely, like, no programming language goes 100% out of fashion. Unless it's Visual Basic, in which case, yeah, no, that can go die. Um, real backwards compatibility dedication. Um, people who are writing stuff for old operating systems, in particular. Like, um, oh, I've got to do a Boulder, Boulder guy's fight. Ah, oh, one last one, cement the books. Um, but yeah, like, I, I remember um, having to support uh, systems running on CentOS 6. And I was just like, and it's like CentOS 6 isn't even that old. I think we're up to... Well, CentOS is ruined now. They've, they've ruined CentOS. Oh, no, I don't have to fight Boulder Guys. He's right here. The star's right here, guys. We did it. Didn't have to fight Boulder. He's still chilling. He's still up there. Hi, Boulder Guys. How's it going? Uh, Cobol's still a lot of use. The problem is it's all code and people who understand it. Co Cobol is job security, though. A lot of people who do Cobol for a living now do it because those programs need to be maintained and no one wants to rewrite it. But... I'm... Uh, programming languages are tools. They're not necessarily, like, hard to replace by any other programming language. A lot of people really wanted to start replacing things with Golang a while back, and Golang has kind of... kind of hit this weird nebulous bit where no one really wants to do it, because the stuff that works in C kind of still works in C, and everyone knows C. So, it's like... You know, your application is already, like, pretty focused. Uh, I'd be a mainframe software can run from the... Yeah, I mean, if you can... If you wrote stuff with punch cards, and you've managed to keep it working until now, that's crazy. Um... But yeah, I, I don't know, like, generally, like, people do lean towards the tried and tested tools. That is a fun green star spot right there, isn't it? Um, people do like leaning towards the tried and tested tools. Um... Did you, did, did you guys know that you can spin the Wii remote? Holy crap. How many stars am I into this game? 238. Make that 239. I love how the end of levels all the way over there. It's kind of neat. Guys, there's only one more star. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. So that was a big rant on uh. Pretty much uh. <laughs> pretty much nothing. You know what I mean though. It's, uh, it's, it's silly. The only the only reason why anyone does this, is, or any of these remasters or remaking anything, is because they want to attempt to, like, COBOL is not just job security, have extended COBOL and Java knowledge, make a company office and uh, migrate programs. 
you will get big companies that are really worried because the last cobalt guy who cannot put a modern language because he doesn't know them is about to go. Oh, that's a that's a bit of an oof. I know I know a couple of cobalt people. They don't. Oh, sorry, as in they know cobalt. We don't have. I don't. I don't think my company has any cobalt in it. Um, but I can I can guarantee that it's like. You don't want to be bleeding edge. It's not fun to be bleeding edge because you find out all the shortcomings like firsthand. It's always good to be like following trends and to let like you know look know when to experiment and know when to just kind of like not not worry about experimenting. Uh, pay a lot of money around, pay a lot of money later because I need a new thing to do the old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think one thing as well. It's not necessarily that like COBOL is like hard or unportable. It's that old programs have old philosophies. Um, because like I worked on um, I think like a 20 year old program um, at my last job and it was really well laid out. It was very like modern in how it worked. Um, it, it had it had stuff like uh, he had smart pointer or oh, sorry it had smart pointer management in C++ um, but this was before smart pointers were introduced in C++ 11 so it was just you know effectively implementing your own standard uh, there was a lot of fun modular aspects to it um, the only thing I guess is that the entire program was monolithic um, it was compiled all in ah. Oh, it's compiled on one fell swoop. Uh, problem reporting old code. Apparently you need extensive knowledge of COBOL because documentation is not a word that exists in COBOL. Um, I think in any language you can write horrendous stuff. Um, but uh, as I mentioned earlier with like the pit of success, it's like there are some languages out there that like, like Java for example, where it's like it's constrained so much in some regards that it at least makes it not impossible to make unreadable. I'm gonna be careful and say not impossible because it's it's certainly not impossible. <laughs> I'm hearing the star. Oh boy, there it is. No, I'm in the background. <laughs> Rather recent couple uh, NES style uh, style game where they showed you they could do the NES using uh, modern. I don't think I saw the actual code for it, but I think, uh, I think we talked about it. Um, the thing with the NES is that, like, you're so cramped for space that you're effectively invited to, um, muck around with the, um, effectively compiled binary. If you did compile your code, a lot of people back then did just write it raw. Um, and, like, it works. Oh, boy. It works. Like, it, I mean, you're only... How big is an NES um, program memory? It's 8 kilobytes, isn't it? You can work in 8 kilobytes. It's not that bad, working in 8 kilobytes. There's a program memory, by the way. I know that there's uh, stuff like that. Um, but then uh, I, I think like people will know, um, like, Pokemon has been an example where it's like, and it's obviously written in C, and then they, uh, they optimize parts to basically make it, you know, run nicely on, uh, one megahertz. Uh, what are they? Sharp chips on the Game Boy, weren't they? Uh, <laughs> it just works, it's definitely one thing. But you know what I mean, where it's like, there's a cost of, um, of, a uh, like, implementation. And in, in quite a few cases, it's like, yeah, I mean, the, the manual way does work. <laughs> if you know what I mean, like, it's, it's okay doing things the manual way if, you're aware of how it works, and ultimately the product isn't too bound by having to do it the manual way. So a lot of video games, you know, they ship once and that's kind of it. And it's a little sad that a lot of video games, the source code is lost, but, you know, a lot of them are written for one platform, and they're not, they're not ex exactly intended to be ever released on other platforms. I feel like that's, you know, such a shortcoming nowadays. But I also feel like, yeah, there's a lot of platform-specific I.O. that kicks in. Um, I need to interrupt this conversation by saying, We've done it! 240 stars! Everything is all complete- Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So, yeah, you were alluding to it the entire time. Um, oh! Oh my gosh! 
Oh, that <laughs> I just died a lot, that's it. Um, so yeah, the mystery extra galaxy, the grand master galaxy. There is one <coughs> star and a comet melt. Well, the comet melt kind of gives it away, doesn't it? Um, but I will say, we're done with the green stars. That is all the green stars. But there is one final ultimate test that needs to be accomplished before this game is completely done. And this level, it's been ages since I played it. So we're going to see how much I suffer at it. Uh, all the poor kids that got excited for this cool secret galaxy that popped up thinking it'll be something. Oh, it's it's worse than it's worse than fun. So well, at least it's 2D. Yoshi. <laughs> so what do we do? This is a ultimate throw everything at <laughs> at the player kind of level. There's these goombas, and I'm dead already at the very first obstacle. I'm gonna burn through all these lives, and it's not gonna matter at all. By the way. Um, but you just got this is this is entirely a get good level. It's it's not like the crazy hardest level. I'm I'm just gonna say like preemptively. But what makes it really hard is how like much consistency that you have to pull relative to the rest of the game. Like there's all that. There is all that right there. And yeah, yeah. There's a Comet version, and you know exactly what the Comet version is. You could probably still get Yoshi here if you really wanted to. Just forever Yoshi music, though. This part here is not, like, crazy difficult. That's not that I remember. Apart from you're in the center and you kind of have to watch out a little bit, but it's not too bad. Uh, you can do it the fastest in the Boulder Galaxy with all the spiky plants. Oh, true, you can, yeah. I don't think I really need to, though, because, like, the only point of the lives is to maintain the checkpoints, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I can guarantee after this star, I'm not going to need lives. Uh, oh, I love these lightning walls from the first Mario Galaxy. They don't really appear much in this game. I love feeling the vibration under my, <laughs> under my thing. With Mario instead of Luigi, if you think it's too easy. Yeah, true. It, it's easier with Luigi. There's a reason why I'm doing everything as Luigi. Having just the, the slightly further jumps does just make things a lot comfier. The tricky part is you've got to maintain picking up uh, the cloud mushrooms as well here. And then you get your safety net of two cloud mushrooms for, I think, this next bit. Yeah. Actually, no, it's not really a safety net, is it? Uh, also not that you get the checkpoints all over. So, when you're within the range... Well... Alright, there ain't no cloud mushrooms anymore. Take your time with these. I, I do remember... Just, like... I, I don't even like spinning, I'm just like... Okay, I do like spinning now. <laughs> I like spinning! Oh boy, there you go. This challenging bit with the overlapping stuff going on. And then the guys who you need to spin in order to take out. Whoops. Alright, get the heck out of dodge. Get the heck out of dodge. <laughs> We're getting down there. There we go. Well, that was easy enough. <laughs> uh, legit, one of the levels for a second player is really challenging. True, yeah. It's definitely a lot of you know reused assets, but a you know it's a it's a final challenge level. And if anything, maybe this is a, a reward for the people who played Super Mario Galaxy One, and their reward after getting every single like star was just to play the beginning of the game again, <laughs> like... Like, I I didn't do it in, in my streams, but if you legit didn't know what your reward was, it's just to play the very beginning of the game with no obstacles in the way. These Gumbas are... And, and, and yeah, you also had to get every single star as Luigi. It's like you had to play the game twice. At least with the green stars, it's something different. Let's swing out, and there we go. 
By the way, still waiting on that uh, Comet Medal. That obviously hasn't shown up, because there's nothing really there. All these, like, jump cuts as well. Is this the... I think the Comet Medal is... There it is, you can see it right there. No, you don't have to take out any of these guys, but... Uh, remember Ghost of Goblin series? Yeah! Yeah, exactly. Playing the game twice. It's not the only game to do that as well. There's a bunch of games um, that did enjoy doing the... Uh... Oh boy. That's a cheeky spot right there. Alright, you do gotta take out these fellas. This felt harder as a kid, by the way, because that was it. <laughs> that actually did feel harder as a kid. It's tricky. And we're gonna see the full the full medal to the test. Full medal to the test? Uh, definitely Ghosts and Goblins is, is the one. I feel like games with, um... There are a lot of games with, like, hard mode is the only mode. Like, kind of things, where it's like, not the only mode, but like, you don't get a true ending unless you beat it on hard mode. There's, there's a bit of that, and it's kind of the same thing. It's just Ghosts and Goblins forced you to play it twice. It wasn't any different the second time as well, was it? Super Mario Brothers almost does it. Where's my extra star? Do I just have to- I've just got to do another- another galaxy until it shows up? I've just got to do another galaxy until it shows up. Alright. <laughs> We're going back to the rolling coaster. Um... Seven or eight tries? Maybe. I can't believe I've got to- I've got to just go into a star. Just to trigger the comet, because it doesn't trigger- what? Some of the comments did trigger immediately after I did the main star, didn't it? Oh, you gotta talk to people? We'll finish the star and we'll just see what happens. It's kind of weird seeing 241 as your star count, isn't it? But, yep, one star left. The actual comet, and that's it, that's Super Mario Galaxy 2. Um, you know, I've definitely enjoyed playing this game again. It's felt good just actually beating it all the way through. Really reminding myself as well, like, the green star bit... I feel like I had a, a sour taste of- uh, I would have I did land on the platform. Luigi just fell off. Come on, Luigi. Um, I feel like, yeah, I, I, my opinion of the green stars soured over time, but then I played it again, and now I'm like, yeah, no, they serve a purpose. And they don't feel like, you know, you can feel uh, like you've had a sense of pride and accomplishment by just getting the 120 stars. The 242 is a bonus. It feels so obviously like it's a bonus. And it's kind of like... I don't know, like maybe back then, maybe back when the game came out, I used to think like either you just kind of beat a game because you didn't care about 100%ing it, or you 100%ed it because you really wanted to see everything in it. But now I've kind of gone, you know, sometimes there's in-between states, and that's what the 120 stars in this game is. It's like, is the main designed content and the green stars are that 100% bonus, but it's a nice, fun, you know, varied 100% bonus. And one that doesn't take too crazy long, like six... Yeah, oh yeah, more interesting than Mario Galaxy 1. Um, but to be honest with Mario Galaxy 1, like, you know, the bonus was having all the stars, really. There wasn't really too much, like, beyond that in any of the other games. Like, you beat Mario 64 with 120 stars, what do you get to do? You get to go on a roof and see a model of Yoshi that they never got to fit in the game. You do that with Mario Sunshine, you get to wear some sunglasses. Mario Galaxy's, like, reward for 120 stars, like... ...was the biggest reward <laughs> at the time, but, eh. Um, yeah, and, and, and being, like, having to hunt these levels a little bit. Like, yeah, there's some levels, like the Boss Blitz Galaxy, where it's like, yeah, it's kind of pointless. <laughs> like... Like, doing, doing all these, all these bosses again just to get the green stars, but... Alright, let's talk around. Let's talk around. Hungry for more adventure? I am hungry for more. Do you wanna... I'm hungry to get the... Th oh, wait! One of these green guys, right? Have you ever seen a cosmic... Wow, okay. Yeah, he did it. He saw one. Oh. I 
just had a, I just had a computer hiccup then. Okay, yeah. I, I have definitely collected the comets. I don't think there's ever, like, part of any of the levels where that comes up. I don't think... I don't think any of these guys are really giving me any... Go get those power stars. I've already got the power stars. None of these guys are giving me any, uh... Any indication as to uh, the comet arriving in the same way as other comets. I want to say it is purely just... You're gonna have the comet appear at some point after you've, you know, done the level, basically. So I've just gotta just meander around until there's a comet. I guess that's my theory. Is it not? Hold on. Look. To the, to the wiki. To the wiki. Grandmaster Galaxy comet. Uh, where is it? This music, by the way. Uh, trigger. How do you get the comet to appear? Uh, oh no. Oh no. I looked it up. You. Uh, it's nine 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 star bits. Can I do it? Can I do it in the stream? Or do I have to grind the star bits? I think I have to grind the star bits, don't I? This music's great, but... I think I gotta grind the star bits. Oh... Uh, well... It's not just for the bank toad. Uh, the worst part is, like, I'm gonna have what, like... Oh, you found two more. It's another f effectively 5,000 away. Is that 6,000? That's 6,000 away. Oh, I found a one up a while ago. So. Yeah, because I'm like, it's 212. I remember grinding for like 20 minutes to do the, the last. Um, uh, Hungry Luma for 2,000 star bits, which means I know this is going to take a couple of extra hours. Alright, you lose a brownie point game. You're making me grind star bits. Again. That's a really obnoxious number of star bits. Um, that doesn't give you, like, max star bits, though. I found, like, the best one is the, um, the spinning logs one, but I think I'll call it there, and then I am on an emulator, yes. Um, what... I, I will call it here, and what I will do is I will do... You, you could manipulate the counter, maybe. I don't know where exactly to find it, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna casually play this on the side. I'm just gonna get the 9999999 or four nines, and I'm gonna come back, uh, and we do it as a bonus stream sometime this week. How about that? How about Friday? We'll do it Friday. Same time, 8.30 on Friday. It's not going to be a full stream. Uh, or grind one galaxy for like an hour or two. Yeah, maybe. It's not going to be a full stream because I, I, I don't think it's going to be interesting to do the grind. And I don't have <laughs> as much to talk about. Um, but I will do a stream where I just do that last star. Because I need to show off the last star. So, one last one. One last little tiny bonus stream. Um, that being said, like, do you want a spoiler? It's a daredevil run of the exact same star I just did. No checkpoints, one hit, good luck. I did get hit a few times, but I think with enough perseverance I'll get it, so who knows. Um, but yeah, hit, being hidden between 9999 star bits is kind of annoying because, you know, I'm scratching my head going, oh, is that it? Like, because, you know, you've got to just kind of assume, okay, well, no crown means no... You know, I haven't done the comet, but... Um... Yeah, oh, no, no, I... Yeah, they shouldn't... They shouldn't do anything more than the Daredevil, and even though the Daredevil's kind of, you know, same level, but... Oh, okay. 
Um, yeah, well, uh, that's a bit of an anticlimactic almost into the game. So, uh, but yeah, no, I will I will give full thoughts uh, when I do that. Uh, but yeah, other than that, we're almost done. Pretty much, almost. <laughs> I wrote finale, but we'll do we'll do a midstream, kick that kick this level's butt, and uh, call it a day. So, anyways, with that, I'm glad. You all joined me for the stream. If you did enjoy it, uh, feel free to tune in and especially tune in on Friday. I will try and get all the star bits by then. We'll do a stream at 8.30 p.m. on Friday and I'll play for just as long as it takes to get that one last elusive star. Um, and yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, you can follow on YouTube or Twitch, I don't know. That's about it. I don't really do any silly takes on any other platforms, so you can follow me on Mastodon, but I just say, hi, I'm doing a stream, and hi, here's the mods. Um, so you're not missing out on much, really. Um, but that's all good. I hope you all enjoyed the stream as well, uh, and make sure that your upcoming week is going fantabulously. Is that, is that, if that is a word? Um, but, uh... Yeah, until then, stay safe, eat your greens, I don't know, I'm tired, this is all, all happening too far, so, uh, stay well everyone, uh, and, uh, we'll catch you all on Friday, for a wonderful, special, midweek stream, on Friday, I guess, that's not really the middle of the week, alright, see ya!